this is Larry Zerner. You're listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for The Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is a former actor, which is Larry Zerner that played in Friday the 13th Part 3. Hello. Hi, Hal. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And... What? <laughs> <laughs> So not only that you were an actor, but you are now an entertainment lawyer, too. Correct. I've been a lawyer now 20 years, 21 years. Was that pretty much after Friday the 13th? I mean, when exactly did you want to go into that field? Well, I, I did the movie when I was 18, and uh, I was in my first year of college, and then uh, continued to act or try to act um, through college and a couple years after that, and then just wasn't, you know, wasn't working out. So, mm-hmm. um went to law school and that's that's been it you know I mean, specifically in entertainment was it just because you actually wanted to help people out or what was your actual motive for this oh yeah because I loved I mean I really loved entertainment I loved copyright law I loved the clients I loved the work and, and that's what you know I didn't want to do tax and I certainly didn't want to do criminal <laughs> and uh, no I always wanted to do entertainment law and, and I love doing entertainment law the, my clients are fantastic uh I, I represent all sorts of people, a lot of people in the horror business um, who come to me because of my Friday 13th connection, which is always fun, and, um, you know, a certain number of reality stars and writers and directors, and it's uh, it's great. It's really interesting. Now, are you actually not getting as much bloodshed compared to a criminal lawyer? There's a little bloodshed in my, uh, in my, daily, uh, in my daily life. Uh, <laughs> Don't uh, try and stay away from that, but, but, you know, but to my clients, you know, when we're filing a lawsuit, you know, it's a, a lot of money at stake. I mean, we've, I've, you certainly got a lot of clients, you know, life-changing money, and that's, that feels good. I mean, I wouldn't feel good to get, you know, some criminal off. <laughs> that wouldn't make yeah. me feel good. Getting, uh, yeah. getting people who've been wronged a lot of money, that makes it feel really good. You know, it all depends on how the case turns out. It's like, you know, this person, you know, owe this much amount of money because they drink so much at this bar and <laughs> this and that. It's, that's all crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't do those kind of bullshit lawsuits. Yeah, it's just all bullshit. But at least in the entertainment industry, you're actually trying to work out something rather than just yell at each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're trying. To, I mean, I was trying to work it out. But sometimes you can't. You got to go to trial because you can't. I mean, my goal is always to convince the other side that I'm right, and they go, "Oh yeah, Larry's right. We don't. We shouldn't be suing, or you know, we should just settle this because Larry's right." But um, and sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't. Well, and also, you just not just one field under that particular category, but you all do like uh, copyright infringement, uh, trademark infringement, and uh, anything related. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, right. So um, sometimes people come to me and they've written a script, and the studio has, uh, you know, taken all of some of it, and uh, we file lawsuits and try and get them money. That's always interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how long? What's the longest have you got as far as the case goes? On the, under that, so, cases are not they go, they go pretty quick. I mean, oh, really? in, in here in, in Southern California, they want you to go to trial in um, you know in a year or just over a year. Or so um, and so they don't really take much more than that. Uh, you also, you got some new projects coming up. Like uh, you mentioned, you had a book and uh, producing. You're actually stepping into the producing. I'm I'm trying. I just uh, optioned a book. Um, if you if you have a Kindle, it's a it's a Kindle book called Public Enemy Zero, uh, uh, about a, a man who um, uh, things happen and uh, everybody wants to kill him. And so uh, basically, if he gets within ten feet of you, uh, you want to kill him. <laughs> uh, uh, he he's just trying to stay alive, and he can't go to the police because the police will kill him. And uh, it's a great story and. Uh, I optioned it, and uh, we're we're working on uh, trying to set it up at a studio. And we'll see what happens. You ever thought about actually doing a little directing as well, or is that just next on life? If this producing goes well for you. I don't have much desire to be a director. I don't really have a director's eye. It's not really my uh, my thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll probably I might take a cameo part in the in the film if it gets made. I I do have a, a cameo coming up in the film Knights of Bad Astum. Um, which should be out mm, sometime later this year, which is a 
horror comedy directed by Joe Lynch and stars Ryan Quanton, Summer Glau, Steve Zahn, Danny Putty, um, Jeremy Simpson. It's a great cast, and uh, I play. I have a, like just a, just a small part, but it was so much. It was fun to get back in front of the camera after uh, you know 25 years uh, without. It was great. It was great fun to shoot. Yeah. So technically, you're not completely non-actor. You're still doing it. You love it. It's because my my friend and client produced the movie, so it just sort of fell <laughs> in my hands. But I'm not out there. Uh, I'm not out there trying to get work. I bet you're going to be in uh, a half a dozen more cameos in television. I bet. Within the next year, I bet. If it happens, you know, if you're listening and you go, oh, I really like to see a, a Larry Zerner cameo in this movie, you can call me. But uh, I am... Uh, I am. I still. I still maintain my union membership. So as long as it's union, I'll do it. Ah. So. Well, how is that going these days, anyway? How's what going? As far as the whole union, I mean, in your in your opinion. Uh, well, I mean, I don't get too involved in the in the SAG politics, uh, which are plentiful. And now, at the moment, there's a huge story be going on because SAG and AFTRA, which after was mostly was the radio and television union, and SAG was the movie union. Though that's crossed, they've crossed lines a lot over the years, and they've been talking for 30, 30 years at least about merging, and finally they're actually going to merge, and the vote is going to take place in a month, and that's uh, that's the big story in um, in the union world, and we'll see what happens if that actually happens. I don't think it's going to affect my life too much, but uh, are you for that though, or are you just pretty much whatever? <laughs> I, I I get because I don't really act so much. I don't uh, I don't try and take a position in it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, uh, I, I don't, I feel like I, I need to may, uh, abstain. I don't want to, I don't, it's not going to affect, it's because it's not going to affect my daily life at all. Yeah, because you're a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, as far as back to the copyright infringement, what, what problems do you think should still be resolved as far as this goes? Well, here's the one thing that I, that most screenwriters who come to me, the one thing they don't know that they need to know which is that if you if you write a script, you need to register it with the copyright office, not the writers guild, because people come to me and they say register with the cop with the writers guild, and the writers guild is just a waste of your money. The the point of co- first of all, it only lasts five years, while well, the copyright registration with the Library of Congress lasts till seventy years after you die. So just on the time frame, that's important. But but even more important is. In a lawsuit for copyright infringement, you only get your attorney's fees if um, you've registered before the infringement began. And since most, you don't really know about the infringement until you hear the movies coming out, at that point it's too late. And, and you may have registered with the Writers Guild. I mean, this happens all the time. They register with the Writers Guild, and they go, oh, I'll register now with the Library of Congress. And I go, it's too late. The infringement already happened. They already made the movie. Uh, and so you, if you sue, you won't get your attorney's fees, and you won't get statutory damages, which, is, which can be substantial. And these things really drive the settlement of a case. So if you're listening to this and you're a screenwriter and you want to write um, and, and, and you're, and you're going to protect your script, Please register with the Copyright Office. If you go, I have a blog. Um, uh, it's Copyrights and Wrongs. Um, you can access it at my website from uh, zernerlaw.com. There's a link to my blog. And on the blog, there's a whole uh, post about why the Writers Guild is a waste of your money. And I, if you don't believe me, read that article and you'll you'll understand. The same thing with Trademark. I know it's a completely different side. Yeah, Trademarks are different. How do you see film as a whole in general? political or do you think it's some kind of a, a big machine that just spits out shit or what's your opinion well i mean there's there's really two different kinds of films i mean there, there's there's there are the, the, you know when you as you get in and, and watch the sausage being made you can see that some films are merely products they just are there's no like every like when i was young i'd go why did they put that actor in that movie he sucks you know why yeah. do they keep using them and why aren't they using you know better actors and you know but because it's all about well, this actor can get them this money, and they can get, you know, and we can get some pre-sales, and we can sell foreign territories, and we can defer some of the costs. And it is a business, because they're putting, you know, I mean, I know it's always a business, but they're putting so much money in, 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 in these films, the, the big blockbusters, the, the, the Kalavik movies and the, and the Harry Potters, you know, they, there's very little ground for, for experimentation, and, you know, they just, 
you know, it's it's we're going to make these elements, and that will get it back, and 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 so that's you can see how that works. And then there's the the, the other films that are really made, you know, for passion. I mean, when you look at the movie like The Artist, which is, you know, who thought that a black and white silent movie done by French people, you know, is right now the full, the front runner for the Best Picture Oscar, and is a huge commercial success. And those people who put money into this were taking, you know, a risk like you know, you know, you like you can believe, and 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 it paid off for them. And that's that's because they had a real love for for the movie. So you, you see both kinds of movies. Because you know, I'm always wondering when you see certain movies come out, you go, who? Who decided to put the money into this? I mean, I, something like Man on a Ledge, which I didn't see, and maybe it's maybe it's fantastic, but uh, you know, it just was what? It's a Man on a Ledge, and it's, it was like that's the premise, and that, that you're going to put forty million or fifty million dollars into <laughs> yeah. to making it just seems sort of uh, crazy. Um, and so I'm, I'm always you know, I'm always sort of taken out by what's going on. But you know, any movie. You know, movies can make money. You just got to make sure you don't spend too much money on it, and that's always the the hard part because people always want to. Do never wants to give you enough money to make the movie you want to make, and so always an issue. It was like in the early days, you know, what back in the eighties is like where they're trying to make more money, but they were given little money, and some of the films actually make it, but then of course, then it takes like what twenty more years just to get this film to actually out there and actually make money after it was already done twenty years ago. Well, and I mean. You know, at at the time back then, you know, there weren't as many options for yeah. for people. So movies, I mean, you know, the the uh, I mean, I think attendance is up at movies. People are going, but they still they go to the they you have to bring them in to, to they only want to see blockbusters. Hard to make money with dramas. I mean, see the movies like I mean, Moneyball and Descendants, which are both very good movies, but I don't think any of them were you know would anyone could say they were super big hits. Um, and the, you know, but so to make and and they they got big stars. To make, but to make a a serious drama without big stars or you know is is very very risky. And even with big stars, you can you can you can take risks. But now, I mean, you know, kids today they got other stuff to do. They're 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 on Facebook. They're playing their video games, and that's that's just going to take so much more time. And you know, right? People would rather. Play, I can play, you know, Call of Duty, you know, for two hours, and you know, I, I and instead of going to a, a crappy movie, and that's a lot more fun. It, it, times change so drastically these days. Now you got to put everything on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as like stealing film wise, it's still happening because you got the internet on on that part. Oh, you mean like where people just sort of um, uh, tape the movie and put them on a BitTorrent? I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't deal with that part of copyright infringement because. That's all the studio. The studio is being infringed. My my take as a lawyer is always I'm representing people who are being ripped off by the studio. No. I'm I'm always suing the studio. I never represent the studio. So it's a different form of copyright infringement. Oh yeah, it's not just based on one spot. <laughs> of course, that would be a big fucking mess, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be. It would be. Yeah. Plug in your book again uh, that you mentioned. A little bit more about it. If you it's can. not my book, but I, I, uh, I mean, the you, one that I mean, you it's a great book. It's a great read, and it's only ninety nine cents. So if you have a Kindle, I, I recommend a highlight. It's called Public Enemy Zero, and uh, I'll plug my website, ZernerLaw dot com. If you need a lawyer, uh, entertainment lawyer, give me a call. I'll talk to you, and uh, look for me in Knights of Badassdom uh, sometime at the, sometime this year. And I don't know when the, the film's being released, but later in the year probably. And then. Uh, if you're in Germany over the summer, I'll be at a I'll be at the Camp Bud Blood Convention in uh, somewhere in Germany, somewhere uh, on August uh, 10th. Well, there you go. 